Hello to all my fellow bomb crew. Today we look at Kudo Sudoku. If this page of rhymes has caused you fear, don't worry, a guide is now here. In all seriousness, let's ignore the poetry and take a look at a tutorial for Kudo Sudoku. This is quite a difficult mod in the sense of time consumption and resources needed. It is extremely interactive between the diffuser and the expert and there is several modules within the module you'll need to know about or have the pages open for or something along those lines to be able to solve this. I will mention I have created a reference sheet that combines all these onto one page that makes life so much easier with this module instead of having to have all those pages open. However, we will look at the base module for now, go through it. We'll look at how the expert and diffuser interacts with this particular module and how you need to use Sudoku to solve it, and so on and so forth. So let's start at the very beginning and go through the base module. So it's letting you know you have a 4x4 four four grid of squares, as seen in the top right corner. Each of these squares will have an individual task within it. Those tasks could be something as simple as entering a letter or a number, could be an entire mod within it, like maritime flags or semaphore. It shouldn't say the entire mod, you just have to make an entry based off what those reference. So the first thing you'll need to do is gather your four letters. So because we're working with a 4x4 four four Sudoku, you only need the numbers 1 through 4. However, instead of submitting straight numbers, most of the time you'll actually be submitting letters. So we need to associate four letters with each of the numbers one through four. How do you do this? You take your serial number, uh, Sierra Papa four, Echo Foxtrot three in this particular bomb. And what we will do with that is take the first letter and the first digit. So in this case, S and four. You want to just automatically assign your first letter to the number one. And what you do with that digit is you move that many spaces clockwise through the alphabet. So we will begin with S plus four, which would work out to W. That would then add up to A, and that would then add up to E when we cycle through. So each of these numbers we associate it with, or each of these letters we associate with the previous next number in line until we have all four numbers. At that point, we have to start working with the diffuser to continue as an expert, but we'll go through the mod a little bit more before we get to that step. So if we go back to the manual, we now have this step done. I did not mention that zero is treated as 10, but that is the case if the first digit of your serial number is a zero, you have to rotate 10 positions through each time. And so we've now associated four letters to four numbers. It mentions a few of the things that can pop up here, uh, Morse code, tap code, braille, so on. So basically when those modules pop up within an individual square, we'll be entering a letter and it will only be one of those four letters we've determined. However, there is a few things pre-filled on the module itself when you start it. These could be numbers, like you might have a Morse number, you could have a maritime flag number, so you got to be careful with that. The rest section here mentions all the other modules that can pop up. So Simon Samples, Cube, Snooker, Mahjong, Directional Arrows, Chess Pieces, Astrology, and so on. And then the final section covers how to input an answer. So essentially, all 16 squares need to be filled out with a correct number. This is based off a completing a proper Sudoku, a 4x4 four four Sudoku, which we'll cover as the expert here in a moment. So essentially, all 16, again, have to be filled out. You put in the correct number for the correct square. And to do that, each square is going to have an individual task associated with it. This will also reset upon a strike, so if, for example, you pulled up Morse code on the square and then you struck, the next time you open up that square, it may not be Morse code again. Also, all 16 squares will be the 16 possible entry methods, so if a card is already on the module, for example, you will not receive a card upon opening any of the other panels. At the end of the day, you start with somewhere between four and six from what I've gathered symbols on the mod already, and you have to fill in the remaining 
to get all 16 worked out. So uh, how you enter it, there's a variety of ways. A blue square means you would use tap code. So in our example, number three is an A. If a particular square needed to have three entered, you would put in the tap code for A. Same thing goes for Braille, semaphore, uh, maritime flags, and Morse, and so on. There's also a cycling section, so a pitcher might show up, or a sound, and you, as the diffuser, you have to keep clicking that to find the correct one. If you pause for more than two seconds on that type of submission, it will submit. So you have to continually cycle until you're ready to put the correct answer in that particular square. This makes the diffuser's job sort of difficult as depending on what they open, they may have to continually cycle until the expert's ready. So it's not advised that you just randomly open panels as the diffuser. You can also only open one at a time. There's also other ways we will go through a full module and you'll see all the different ways that that can happen. But for now, essentially each individual square has its own unique submission method. and You have to submit the numbers one through four or their associated letters in each of those squares to solve the module. So as mentioned, there is a ton of modules within this module that you'll need. You can either have all those pages open, so astrology, chess, not so much. You, if you know what the symbols look like, that's fine. Mahjong, if you know what the symbols look like, you're fine otherwise. These are colors, these are directions, you should be fine here. But you will need braille, you'll need maritime flags, you'll need semaphore, and so on. So instead of having all those pages open, I have also made a one-page reference guide that should help a ton. Um, we'll be using this for the tutorial just to make things simple. It's very hard to EFM this bomb or module for yourself because of the two-second submission rule. So to make things easy, we'll use this reference sheet. So this covers everything you need. I didn't mention the cube, but the cube symbols are on there. There's also binary letter positions and the rest I believe I mentioned. So let's head back to what the expert needs to do. At this point, we've determined the four letters and the four numbers associated with them. However, we can't really start solving our Sudoku grid until we get some sort of information. So this is where the first interaction with the diffuser will come in. As the expert, you're going to have the diffuser read which positions are filled on the bomb and what they consist of. You'll then convert these to numbers for your Sudoku grid, and then you will solve the Sudoku. For those who don't know how to solve a Sudoku, we will cover that after we get these four into the panel. So to begin, we'll go to the top right corner in Delta 1. There is a spade. In the manual or on the sheet, we'll see spade is associated with the number 1. So as the expert, you can make your Delta 1 a 1. In Bravo 2, we'll see there's a maritime flag. So this could be one, two, three, four, or one of your four letters. So there's only eight possibilities. So it's a blue outer square, white inner square, then a red center, which we will see on our sheet that that translates to W. W translates to two. So we can put the number two in this position on our grid. A red snooker ball is going to be associated with the number one. We can put the number one in that position on the grid. And finally, the letter E is going to translate directly to 4. We can put a 4 directly in that portion of the grid. All right, so, so standard Sudoku rules indicate that you need 1 through 4 in every column, in every row, and in every section. Now, it's not clearly broken down here, but on a standard 9x9 nine nine Sudoku, you would have a 3x3 three three section that needs 1 through 9. It just scales down. It's the same case here. So every 2x2 two two grid needs the numbers 1 through 4. So that's how we're actually going to begin this. Uh, as the expert, you need to fill out all these open positions with the correct numbers. So, and I guess I didn't mention, uh, you 
as it needs one through four in all those positions, you also can't have the same number twice in anything. So for example, I could not put a one here because we already have a one in that column. So instead, what we're going to start with is this little corner section. We need a two and a three, but we know a two cannot go here because that column is occupied. So we'll put the two here and the three here. All that's left for this column is a four. We will put the four there. One cannot be here, therefore this top corner piece needs a one, this needs a three, this needs a two, so on and so forth, and then we'll go ahead and complete that grid. So we know this has to be the one, this has to be the four, we know this has to be the two, this has to be the three, therefore this is the three, this is the four. That will complete our Sudoku. On the expert side, once that's done, it's all interacting with your diffuser from here. So essentially, this is the grid the diffuser will see. You'll need to have the diffuser enter 3 into the top left corner in alpha 1. However, it's not as simple as entering 3. You have no idea what module they're going to open up in that particular panel. So let's open up alpha 1 and see what we get. So we have the cube symbols. So again, we need the number three in this panel based off our solve Sudoku. So we will tell the diffuser to look for either the Pluto symbol or the trailing off uh, musical one, which is Pluto. So we're going to submit that. And again, to submit something like that, you just leave it for two seconds on the correct entry. If, uh, if you stop clicking at any point and you leave it for two seconds, it's going to submit. So as the diffuser, be very careful with that. Make sure you're cycling until you have the right answer. In Bravo 1, we're going to open that up, and we have an arrow. So we need the number 4 here. 4, in arrow sense, would be facing to the right. So this will spin infinitely until I click to stop. So we're going to click when it's facing right. That will lock into position continue through. This is another cycling one. We know we need the number two here. In alpha two, we have braille entry. So we know this position needs to be a one, but you do not enter numbers through braille. If you're entering something, you're entering a letter. So we know that one is actually S, and an S in braille looks like this. So to submit this, we just click the green panel. Again, something to be wary of as a diffuser. What you open up, you might not want to click a second time. So you got to be very careful there. It's very easy to strike on something like that because some of the panels you open need to be clicked in order to not submit. And others, if you click right away, you're going to strike. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned it yet or not, but also if you strike, the panel will close and it could change which module is underneath it. So if you, if I entered that braille wrong, for example, it might open up a maritime flags or something instead. It wouldn't open up a maritime flags because we already did maritime flags, but you get the idea. So we'll continue on to Charlie 2. This is going to be a blue square. Blue square indicates tap code. So we need to enter in this position a 4. 4 is an E. An E in tap code is 1 and then 5. So we'll click once and then 5 times. That will submit. We continue on to delta 2. This is red. Red is Morse and it works like Morse Maddox. So if you're not familiar with how to submit via Morse Maddox, take a look at that mod or manual. But we know that this has to be a 3, and 3 is going to be alpha. Alpha in Morse is dot dash. So we're going to go ahead and submit that. In Charlie 3, we have a 3. Let's open it up. So that was actually a sound. That would have been Simon Samples. I do not have the sound on for my bomb, so I did not hear that. Fortunately, I got very lucky, and I guess a hi-hat was selected. So in that case, there is a sound-related one, and it works exactly the same as the arrows and the chess pieces and things like that, where you just have to select the correct sound. So in this example, 
hi-hat would have been 3, which luckily it was on. So we'll now head to delta 3, which is going to be binary. Again, green is sort of a submit button. So we are looking for a 2 here. 2 is W. And W in binary would be 10111. Enter that in. Hit submit. Alpha 4 is going to be Mahjong. Again, this is another cycle one. We want the number 2 here, which is the purple flower. And as you'll notice, as I mentioned, all these are going to be completely different. Once you solve one, it will not show up a second time. So for astrology, we need the number 3, which would be Earth. That will turn black. Or astrology does not turn black. And for Charlie 4, we need the number 1. This is going to be semaphore. So we need a semaphore S because S is associated with 1. S would be west and then southeast. Again, click green to submit. And our final panel is likely should be chess. And we're looking for a 4, so this is going to be a queen. And that is a solve module. Again, this is extremely time consuming and takes a lot between the expert and the diffuser, as each of these probably takes a good 10 seconds to communicate and you have to do it at least 12 times. So uh, that is how you handle this module. If I plan on getting this reference sheet up on the site if possible. I've not communicated that yet, but this is extremely helpful. Uh, otherwise, just make sure you have all those manual pages open in advance or you're going to be leaving your diffuser hangings, clicking on a button multiple times, waiting for your answer. So again, the things you'll need open if you don't want to use this would be tap code, the cube, braille, semaphore, maritime flags, and more smatics. You might also need chess or astrology or mahjong open if you don't know those symbols. Uh, I'm sure your colors, arrows, and suits are fairly straightforward. Also, Simon samples you might need for a description of the sounds. So overall, that's how you handle this module. The serial number thing can be handled immediately by the expert without any information. All you need is a serial number for that. But then you need to communicate at least once with your diffuser to get the set positions. You then need a slight break to work out your Sudoku, and then it's all interactive from there. So based off some testing I've done so far, this module, even with this reference guide, takes about three and a half to four minutes minimum to complete. So it is, again, a quite long, intensive module that requires a lot of interactivity, so make sure you plan around that.